Welcome to the Aquarius New Moon webinar. We continue our work of meditative support for the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And today we will use the energies of this time, the energies of Aquarius New Moon, to focus on the goal number seven affordable and clean energy. And uh, I invite uh, Klisha from South Africa, Katya from Russia, and Marta from the United States to focus this meeting. So please, the floor is yours. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Uh, hello, good evening. This is Klisha. Um, I'm going to start saying my thing just now. I think Katya is going to go first and just uh, tell us about the astrology energies of um, Aquarius. Thank you, Katya. Katya, can you please mute yourself? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the astrology. We are in the sign of Aquarius. The sign that is extremely important at this point in time because at the moment, as we all probably know, we are shifting from the uh, era of um, Pisces into the era of Aquarius, which is a larger cycle of two and a half thousand years. And um, the energy is uh, of this sign are incoming very powerfully at the moment. So we are also very much related now to the energies of uh, Saturn because Saturn governs the first decanate of the Aquarian age for 700 years. We are under the rule of this amazing being that helps us to use this opportunity to restructure ourselves and um, shift our work into the mode of service. Working for Aquarian goal. Because in that sign, the server of the world is coming about. So right now we have a very important moment because now Saturn crossed over into Capricorn. And um, it is in full strength, powerful, present, working for us. And if we align ourselves in deep, relation to this amazing energy I think we lost Katya's uh, sound. Uh, Katya, if you can hear me. Yes, yes, I apologize. Uh, so, yes, so Capricorn and uh, Saturn full strength. And uh, now we have an interesting combination as well. We have a square between Mars in Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. So we have a very strong presence of the sixth ray and we had just a solar eclipse which was again at the, at the, at the point of um, Chinese New Year. So there's a lot of influence 
very powerful influence going on. So very important it is now to be cautious, to be present and to be very real, I would say, as for very current moment. And as for the sign of Aquarius, it is a great opportunity. Also, not only because of the Saturn connection, but also because of Uranian connection, because Uranus is a ruler of Aquarius. And now, in this year, in May of 2018, it is shifting. It, it was, for seven years, it was in, uh, it was in um, Aries, and now it is shifting into Taurus, the sign that rules the new group of world service. So whatever was anchored as an impulse and revolutionized in a way in, a, in um, Aries, now it's getting into works and manifestation in Taurus. So let's pay attention to that and uh, let, it, let us meditate on those energies during this time. Thank you. Um, over and out. Thank you, Klisha. Thank you very much, Katja. Um, can you share my screen, Alexander? Yes, we can see your screen now. Okay. I decided to start off um, with this quote. Um, opportunity, which Katja has just been speaking about, brings illumination and brotherhood. These are the gifts that Shambhala is planning to confer upon mankind during the Aquarian age. If man will but prepare for them, accept them and use them, only the future will make clear man's reaction. Um, I've made a short, short list of the affordable and the targets. Um, I'm not going to go to all the sub targets as well because otherwise it's going to take a long time and we have got a lot of interesting stuff going on tonight. Um, so I, I, in the handout I've given, I've given uh, quite a substantial list of the indicators as well. So please feel free to browse through them and then we can get on with the interesting stuff. Okay, unity in diversity and diversity does not break unity. Glamour World Problem, page five. I'm not going to talk about the solar power tonight because Iris Spelling did this terrific talk in Leo in 2016. And I must thank Rebecca Hood for helping me uh, with my ideas um, for tonight. Uh, I want to just draw your attention to a further um, link between U U Aquarius and Uranus. And when Uranus um, entered Aquarius twice already in history that we know about was 1912 to 1919 and 1996 to 2003 and Uranus is the destroyer of the status quo so it and it uses the energy of lightning to do that and because of this it brought us to this uh, tumultuous period in human history called World War One, One and World War Two and we know that has changed the face of the earth and the way that humanity is thinking and uh, reacting 1996 also brought a big change um, with the weakening of race 6 and the strengthening of race 7 uh, came to a very heady effect and that was also the start of the civil war in Afghanistan which we know was ongoing and ex actually just exploding right through that area. It is suggested by Master DK that we can uh, draw a, a correlation between the three fires, the fire by friction to oil and coal and gas and solar fire to the solar electrical generation. 
and then the electrical fire to fusion, which hopefully when used correctly by mankind, will bring us into uh, living responsibly and in right human relations with ourselves and the environment. Uh, in my research, I came across many uh, individuals that had immense effect on human consciousness. Um, President Lincoln, Galileo, Rosa Parks, and then I came across this article uh, and I realized that President Ronald Reagan was actually a surprising figure in uh, USA history. Uh, Rebecca reckoned that he had very conservative views and us in South Africa don't really know a lot about him. So it was very surprising when I learned that he was actually also Aquarian born, like President Lincoln and Galileo. And then in a summit, in a Geneva Superpower Summit in 1985, uh, President Ronald Reagan met with General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev and they discussed international diplomacy and the arms race. And they came up with the idea of this international project to develop fusion energy for peaceful purposes. And the outflow of that was the International Thermonuclear Experiment Reactor in the south of France called the Toma Complex. Uh, this is quite an amazing experiment and it was surprising when I came across it because I didn't even realize that it went from strength to strength. And this uh, experiment supports the SDG 7 uh, under the Ensure of the Universal Access to Energy by 2030. There are several countries involved, China, Europe, Japan, Korea, Russia and the USA. Now ITER, or that long word International Thermonuclear Experiment Reactor, um, is a huge plasma volume and they, what they produce is they produce a burning plasma. When it is heated, it will have a sustained fusion reaction, which will generate uh, this, be self-generated in a sense by this fusion process, which will have an ongoing effect of producing electricity through this heated plasma. Very difficult to understand, um, not being a science buff in myself, but I found it very interesting as well that the US um, actually covers 9% of the total cost, but uh, they also proposed budget cuts uh, by cutting the budget, by the financing by half. Or, and then surprisingly again, President Donald Trump asked the administration to re reconsider the budget cuts. Um, and if the financing is not reduced, the plasma ignition may happen as soon as 2025, which we know is an auspicious year. And then the current plan for full power is 2035. Now I know this can go so wrong in so many ways, but with the right intention, it can also be a solution to affordable and clean energy, and energy geared to peaceful purpose. I'm going to take a break now and give over to Martha. Uh, she's also got some interesting information about the UN. Martha, Martha, over to you. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you for these webinars. Thank you to my colleagues, Iris and Sharon, who are also on the line. Um, thank you to all of you who are supporting people who actually do uh, commit themselves in form at the UN. Um, I have been there for 20 years and since 2012 have enjoyed the support of the Ageless Wisdom tradition and can say to you that your contribution to our energetic efforts are tangible. We can feel it, we know it, uh, it's a reminder that we're never alone. 
so um, I had found some research that uh, pointed out that before the UN Charter was actually finalized in 1945, at Dunbarton Oaks when it was being discussed, there was uh, a recognition on the part of the drafters that, as Einstein said, that the uh, success of the United Nations could only be achieved by a higher uh, source than the level on which it was created. So at times we uh, are helped to remind ourselves that spiritual nature of the UN was truly one of the most tangible institutions that energy is finding manifestation in the collective, on the ground, and in a way that dignifies and sacralizes Earth itself. This particular, um, oh, I would recall as well that the making of these goals was an outgrowth of several summits and conferences, world conferences, notably those in Rio de Janeiro. But it's interesting, I, at this talk, let me lift up one that doesn't get as much of a mention, a conference that was held between those two conferences. In 2002, the World Summit for Sustainable Development, which took place in Johannesburg, South Africa. And at that time, there was um, clear recognition uh, that life needed to be transformed. The Millennium Development Goals had been laid out in 2000. They were underway. And while they were certainly important, their end time was 2015. And it was very clear in 2002 that more would be needed. So when the summit in 2012 came about, the second summit in Rio de Janeiro, there was an outcome document that called for the drafting of these sustainable development goals to pick up, improve, transcend the Millennium Development Goals. It took three years for that to take place. And the process was definitely one filled with energies toward construction and energies toward destruction. And those of us at the UN that were um, doing what we knew to support a positive outcome could feel and experience the enormity of the conflict that took place. So the first thing to remember is the fact that a universal document that applied to everyone and included everyone was a miracle. So in many ways, the words themselves have limitation. Uh, I believe that those of us who have made a spiritual commitment to the UN and through the UN on behalf of the work of the new group of world servers know that it, it is our opportunity to lift the words into the level of energy to which truly they belong. So I was impressed by the prayer, every, that prayer for the United Nations always uh, speaks to me in a different way. And the words that lifted themselves out this afternoon, this morning, this evening, um, were the giving birth to that which ought to be. Because indeed, the new group of world servers are midwives, and we are already preparing, and we are already accepting, and we are already using that which is coming about through the larger universe, um, which some of us call God. So the goal seven was ready to happen. It wasn't uh, the most controversial goal, um, but it's so interesting, Cleesia, that you brought out the fact that it is a very significant goal 
that can go very wrong um, and yet is a, is a ready to happen that with the discoveries of photons and the use of solar light and solar energy it, this is a goal that we might use our imagination to to think about the transformation that would happen for all people if the three billion people who are still using wood, coal, and other inadequate means for energy, if light energy, if solar energy were, were free and were given to all, imagine the quality of the atmosphere just from a very physical place, how different that would be and how possible. Um, and it brings to mind the fact that the way these goals were constructed, they're interdependent upon one another. So while we focus on energy in this talk, we could also be reminded that it brings to mind again, goal 10, which talks to us about equality, dignity, the rights of all. Goal 13, climate change. Goal 16, peace and 17 partnership. So um, I, I think the word that speaks to me is this making accessible to pave the way to allow for all those who need it to have access to energy that is of good quality and that um, transmutes a lot of our economic system as well, since so much of the basis is on the, uh, based upon fossil fuels. So it's, it's a practical goal, it's an immediate goal, and it's a goal that tends to speak for itself. Um, it was universally agreed upon uh, in the duality of the formation of these sustainable development goals. There was the pressure from civil society, the counter pressure from the governments, who, uh, especially those who have built their economies on fossil fuels. So we can celebrate um, after 2015 when these goals were finalized. This is a goal that speaks to both opportunity, accessibility, um, equality, and the power of civil society um, to um, challenge governments to pay attention and to walk in the light to make um, solar energy accessible. So again, I do want to thank you very much, and I'm sure that Iris and Sharon may have more to say, but Klesha, I'll turn it back to you and know that they're here to be called upon, should you wish to ask them to add anything uh, with regard to the United Nations. Thank you again, and bless everyone. Um, thank you very much, Martha. And yes, um, please feel free to make comments and ask questions. That's why we're here, um, so that we can get clarity and as much information as we can get, so that we can actually fill our imagination to create a utopia and not a dystopia for humanity. Um, so if, is there any questions or any um, comments? before I carry on. If anyone would like to add anything, just please raise your hand and uh, we will unmute you. Uh, Alicia, please continue. Okay. Okay. 
Um, okay, this is the um, another thing that I actually just uh, didn't mention between uh, the President uh, Ronald Reagan and uh, uh, his counterpart, Ms., uh, Mr. Gorbachev, is that it's like Pisces were handing the baton over to Aquarius because uh, uh, Gorbachev was actually born a Pisces and Reagan was born Aquarius. So I found that very interesting. Um, uh, another, a few very interesting ideas that came up in my research of affordability and also um, accessibility of um, energy, of sus sustainable energy, is um, I came across this uh, website of the solar, that's called Solar Turtle. And they build from shipping containers these little um, uh, solar panel uh, kiosks really, where uh, you can actually, if you're in a rural area, you can actually have like a little battery, or you can take your cell phone there and go and charge it, and or you can take your battery back home at night so that you can have electricity at home at night. Um, it is actually main, uh, aimed at crisis, um, uh, crime-ridden areas, and also other areas um, like Mozambique at the moment and Lesotho, they don't really have like an infrastructure grid that can supply everybody with um, electricity because of the big wars that they have and Lesotho is very poor. So these are very accessible and affordable and easy to get there because you can just go and drop it with a helicopter wherever you need to or take it in by a truck. Um, another very interesting um, venture is uh, Mr. Clement Mokenene, is a South African, that got this idea of harvesting vehicle energy through high traffic volumes of um, uh, vehicles, motor vehicles, say for instance in peak hour traffic. Uh, I couldn't find a photo. Uh, but there is a YouTube video that please watch it, it's very interesting. Um, he got his idea when he watched uh, uh, one of these airbuses land and he realized the amount of energy that's actually transferred from the tires of a vehicle to the surface of the road and that gave him this wonderful idea which he actually is developing and looking for um, so, uh, money support. Uh, other ideas that I came across is that the French Development Agency gave or is supporting in renewable energy and water and transport projects in Tanzania, uh, which is a very small and very poor country in Africa. Uh, and then Please correct me about this one because I still couldn't believe it when I read it. Is that uh, the the World Bank is stopping the financing of oil and gas gas projects from 2019, and uh, because they wanted to also uh, support new, uh, renewable energy and support the the, the UN uh, sustainable development uh, goals and facilitate the access to clean energy. Now I just want to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity to show my support to the UN and to the work of the new group of world servers and also initiative 2025 um, which I have been following for a while and I want to leave you with these words of Yuma Sakela, which who dies, died during this month, who is an icon and uh, in South Africa. He's a trumpet player and he won several Grammy Awards over the years. And our new president of last night actually brought this word to their people, to the people of South Africa. I want to be there, I'm oh, sorry, his name is President Sir Cyril Ramaphosa. 
and we have great hopes for this country after him. Sorry, and I forgot another thing. Um, the cri water crisis in South in Cape Town is um, been per uh, postponed for another two months, day zero, which was supposed to be in April. Now they've actually extended it to June because of a great outflow of goodwill from the farmers in the area, which have from their personal own dams uh, are supplying Cape Town with water free of charge. And there's also other outpourings of goodwill towards uh, Cape Town of uh, people all over the country sending down water in uh, big trucks um, so that uh, the people in Cape Town don't have to actually go and queue for water. And now I will leave you with the words of you, Masakela. I want to be there when the people start to turn it around, when they triumph over poverty. I want to be there when the people win the battle against AIDS. I want to lend a hand. I want to be there for the alcoholic. I want to be there for the drug addict. I want to be there for the victims of violence and abuse. I want to lend a hand. Send me. Send me, send me. Thank you very much. Alicia, this is Martha. Yes. Yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful song. How are you? It I is a beautiful. It brought to mind the opportunity that we have, those of us who believe in the spiritual significance of these sustainable development goals to pay attention to what is happening under our noses. Um, I'll lift up another um, resource for anyone who would like to know what other people are doing. There is a sustainable development solutions network, easy to access um, in, on the computer S-E-S-N is the acronym. And that the, the groundswell that is taking place as some of our corrupt leaders uh, are toppled or losing respect, uh, losing their, um, their power, is this absolute uh, unified intuitive collective that is in some places on the streets as it was in New York when the women uh, had their second annual march. Thousands of women walking peacefully to remind everyone of the uh, dignity and nobility of what it is to be a woman. And that the um, goodness of the, it was the goodness of the farmers that spoke to me, Kosha that it, the history of racism and violence of South Africa, that the farmers would share their resources with those in need. That's, that's the dynamic that lies behind these sustainable development goals. As they are, it's a framework, some of them are technical, but the spirit of them and the soul of them is for this humanity, this uprising humanity that has within its grasp the power to transform. Uh, it is it's truly incredible. So thank you so much for that song and reminder that um, we're in a revolution. <laughs> Yes, um, really. Thank you very much, Kalisha. It's it, it was an amazing, absolutely amazing, you know, example. It's um, I know what made me think uh, also about when you were mentioning those amazing inventment in inventions. Uh, that when Uranus shifts into Taurus, it's uh, a sign uh, where kind of this mix allows a lot of amazing and completely unconventional ideas to come through. Because normally Taurus is very, you know, um, <laughs> I 
would say, not cautious, but, you know, very down to earth you know, as an earth sign, right? But when Uranus enters that sign, all sorts of an amazing things become possible. And um, so I hope that this will help, you know, all those people who are creating pretty amazing projects and uh, stepping out of the box completely, you know? So thank you very much. It, it was really very inspiring, you know, inspiring talk. Thank you. Uh, there uh, is raised hand. Uh, Iris, I unmuted to you, so if you could please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Hi, Iris. <laughs> hi, hi. Oh, thank you, Klesia and Katya and Martha and, and Alexander. What a wonderful program. Um, very inspiring. And I, I just had a couple small comments. I, I just wanted to say how important it is because um, our energy use and uh, patterns and account for 60% of all the greenhouse gas emissions. So it's a big chunk of, um, of helping the world become uh, sustainable and um, and not not uh, just using it as a resource. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that um, the time, you know, I mean, it's crucial that we move quickly on this and that, that it's important that we don't overlook uh, small increments of change. I think it's starting to affect the large corporations, the finance, all of those things. Um, but sometimes activists just want all or nothing, and um, these big, the big, the big conglomerates. It's not always easy for them to move. I'm not making excuses for them, but. Um, it's not always easy for them to change so quickly, but um, getting a sense that they are there's there's so much pressure now to do that. So it's it's important that we encourage each other together instead of um, making all this a battle, because coal has served us well over the years, and. Um, gasoline it's just that now it's it's really time to change so thank you all um and uh, the last um, the last thank you iris that that's absolutely I agree it's not all or nothing it's step by step and uh it's whatever can be done you know slowly because it's like a huge ship you know leaving the, the equatoria, you know, you right. they can't move, you know, you need a small right. boats to tag it along, you know, to ship like, so it is, you know, and also I thought that we're talking about sustainable energy and um, one of the most, it's just Aquarius, right? Two rivers, two rivers right. of right. energy of love and um, life blending together, bringing it to the point of cleansing whatever was left over. You remember it's in um, um, Hercules, it's, um, it's when, he, when he cleanses the um, stables, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Putting together two rivers. So yes. we use, we need to in, invoke both energies and we are connected to, to those both energies of love and life. And uh, it, it is powerful. It's one of the most powerful energies. Now, what of life I, am I poured forth to thirsty men? It's, we are thirsty. <laughs> we are deprived of that, you know, in a way of that liveliness, that etheric, you know, vitality. So that needs to be brought about. And uh, 
through the focus on the energy, I think it's a big step towards the understanding of the spiritual energy and the right way of using it. So that's uh, also came as a comment. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, you are unmuted. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello. Yeah, I, I wanted to um, echo um, Iris uh, and her um, remarks to uh, Clesia and Katya and, and Martha. Um, it was uh, wonderful to hear. And uh, for you, Alexander, I know I've said it before, but I, I can't seem to say it enough how much I appreciate that this platform uh, has been created. And so uh, people that are in the work can focus um, their energy on the sustainable development goals. I also wanted to, um, I had a couple of points in terms of us doing this work uh, within Aquarius energy and um, had the idea that, that uh, money is energy and um, a lot of times my personal inclination I guess that I'd like to share is uh, as these goals are addressed that we follow uh, we follow the money and as Clesio was saying that the um, there's some really big uh, institutional investors and we're getting the support um, ho hopefully that we need um, to make the, these dreams into a reality. Um, so then on, on uh, Sundays when I do the money meditation, I, I often uh, see the money uh, being directed toward the greatest good for the greatest number and in support of the sustainable development goals. The other thing I wanted um, to say is that Aquarius is, is a lot about partnerships you know, and uh, Aquarius energies are kind of very unique, revolutionary, uh, things that we haven't seen before. And with Saturn and Capricorn, as Katya mentioned, uh, I think it's allowing us or inclining us to see uh, partnerships that we haven't seen before. And specifically, we've got uh, the UN um, leaders of countries, and we have these businesses which is uh, coming to the table, and um, uh, and, and they're you know they're doing uh, pretty remarkable things. Uh, one thing I I read you know because we got these entrepreneurs coming along, and coming up with all of these wonderful innovative ideas, and um, uh, you know there's something in the, in me that says well they could have done that before but they were not motivated because the money, the investments uh, were not there. And we needed the UN to go at exactly what's being done. The UN had to go to the grassroots, say, what do you need? There's demand for these things. And um, then once there's, there's uh, the work on the demand side is done, then the leaders of corporations can invest in entrepreneurial ideas and the countries, um, like Somalia, like Martha mentioned, uh, you know, uh, citizens of uh, Somalia are still cooking their food on on um, um, char you know charcoal uh, barbecues, and they don't have lights. Um, and so, uh, you know, to to see this these kinds of things being addressed um, is very interesting. And then the last thing is that, and Martha and Iris maybe uh, can keep me honest on this, but but I thought at one point uh, we were talking about free energy for all, that Ban Ki-moon was saying by 2030 we'll have free energy for all. And now I see that it's sustainable energy for all, which is um, different in my mind anyway. And um, uh, so, Again, with my inclination to be following the money, it's a, it's a free free energy for all brings to mind to me uh, the work of Tesla, uh, because we do I I believe anyway that that Tesla has figured out 
uh, many moons ago that there is a way for us to all have free energy. Um, but the you know corporations are our partners, and I'm sure they they're not so keen about having free energy. But it's wonderful that they're going along with sustainable energy. So thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for that uh, addition. Uh, I think that we, in a unique position, when we meditate, we can take uh, this sustainable development goals layer higher. And uh, probably this notion of the free energy was not something that the UN could put in the language of the SDGs. But uh, I think as we meditate, we can keep that in mind that it's the, the the goal, the actual purpose of uh, ultimate purposes, yes, it's a free energy. And as we meditate today, I suggest we keep that as a target because it's the energy of life, it's free. It I, would, I, I would like to share support what you just said, Alex and Martha, that, that the decommodification of public good is the highest is one of the higher possibilities of these sustainable development goals. And the, the reality is, is that um, we have the power to visualize uh, bigger than the words themselves. So I thought the point about both recognizing the power of money to accelerate uh, these transformation and to visualize all the commodification of what we might call public goods, water, energy, um, food. So thank you for that comment. I suggest we now um, go into meditation and so Clisha, please lead us. Sorry, I think Clay has also got a question or her hand is up. Uh, Claire, um, just, uh, yes, there is a comment uh, that Claire shared with us. Friends, in light of today's discussion and our ongoing focus on the UN SDGs, I would like to uh, commend Jan Arthur Bertrand's third part film titled Human. This is the link in, to this uh, uh, film. I will share it now. Thank you, Klisha, Marta, and Katya for today's inspiring offering. Yeah, thank you, Klisha, for noticing that. Uh, I didn't see that in the chat, so I will put it now for everyone um, to, to be able to copy the a link to this uh, film that Claire mentioned. Thank you, Claire. So I think now we can go into meditation. Alicia, will you lead us? Yes, I can lead us in meditation. I just want to say thank you very, very much again for this opportunity and thank you very much for the comments. Shall we just take a moment of silence and then we'll start. I am one with my crew brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them.
alignment. We recognize our place as a group within the heart center of the new group of world servers. Mentally extend a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy. The planetary heart center. To Christ, the heart of love within the hierarchy. To Shambhala, where the will of God is known. Higher interlude. Hold the mind focused for a few moments on the planetary role of the new group of world servers, mediating between hierarchy and humanity, responding to a hierarchical impression and meditating the plan into existence. Meditation, reflect on the seat thought and keep in mind SGG7, the affordable and clean energy, that by 2030 ensuring universal access to affordable and reliable and modern energy services, by 2030 increasing the substantially the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix, and also by 2030 double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency while reflecting on water of life am I bought forth to thirsty men.
precipitation. Visualize the precipitation of the will to good, essential love throughout the planet, from Shambhala, through the planetary heart, the hierarchy, through the Christ, the new group of world servers, all through all the men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world, and finally through the hearts and minds of the whole human family. Lower interlude. Consider the many ways in which the power of the one life and the love of the one soul are working out in the world through members of the new group of world servers. So building the thought form of solution to world problems. Distribution. As the great invocation is sounded, visualize the irradiation of human consciousness, so the irradiation of human consciousness with light and love and power. From the point of light, within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, May love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide literal wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light look out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love 
and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, Klisha. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Please come join our coming webinars on March 3rd, Pisces Solar Festival with Malvin Artley, focusing on the state of world, the world affairs. The next new moon webinar will be on March 18th. We will use the opportunity of Pisces energy to focus on goal six, clean water and sanitation. And on March 20th, uh, we will celebrate together Equinox, the Equinox Festival, the beginning of the new annual cycle and uh, 2025 Initiatives Coordination Group will present the year plan the next annual cycle. Thank you very much. And let's end our work today sounding Gayatri. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return. Unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by the disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. <laughs>